again and welcome to our worship today from the Rochdale and Littleborough Methodist Circuit. Our Bible text for today is the one that has this quote when Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, I know them and they follow me. I'm wondering if you are confident in that. You know, there's that challenge there, isn't there? Do you believe that? Do you believe that your voice is heard? And do you believe that you hear God's voice? And is that what makes you follow? Maybe you've not yet heard that voice. Maybe today, this week, it's the time to give it a go. So, we are going to just have a few words of an approach to our worship. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Come, let us worship and listen to the voice of the Lord. We sing, I worship you, Almighty God, there is none like you. I worship you, Almighty God. There
A prayer for all ages. Dear God, help us to hear your voice every day. Help us to hear your voice in the songs of worship we sing. Help us to hear your voice in silent prayer. Help us to hear your voice through our friends, through the things and circumstances around us. And help us to hear your voice through the world. Help us to hear your voice and so be part of your special people each day and every day. Amen. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you. And I will trust in you. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will. my ways in righteousness and he anoints my head with oil and my cup it overflows with joy I feast on his will trust in Jesus, and I will trust in Jesus, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will
So the setting for that statement that I just introduced to you before we sang the song was set in winter. And last week we were set in chaos near the sea. And if you remember, we were brought out of the sea and invited to breakfast. Well, this week, I think it gets a bit darker still. Um, if you can get darker from the chaos of the sea. But the setting, it states in the Bible reading that it was winter time. And I got to thinking, well, what does that mean for us? And you know what? I think it does mean that perhaps the people were in a bit of a dark place. The Jewish leaders at that time were trying to trick Jesus. They were trying to trap him. And we read that they actually were encircling him and barraging him with questions. I don't know whether you've ever felt like that as a follower, barraged by questions to convince others. Gets a bit scary, actually. But they were struggling to accuse Jesus of anything. They couldn't just find what they wanted. But nevertheless, he was in the midst of a hostile challenge. The opponents were asking just who he was. And I guess that is a question that we genuinely ask quite often. Some of us can be really certain, but others, we do need to think about it. We do need convincing. And so just as last week on that seashore, Jesus was about convincing his disciples, here he is now trying to convince the Jewish leaders and I guess all the other people who were on the edges listening. He actually said, well, I've told you, I've told you what this is all about, but you still don't get it. And even, I guess, some of his own didn't really get it. So that's speaking to our moments of doubt too. It does seem occasionally, or more than occasionally, that Jesus speaks in riddles. He didn't want to say anything that was going to put him in a place where people could silence him and stop him speaking. Not at that time. Now, I know it's good. We're often tempted to jump in with both feet, aren't we? And say just what we think right in that moment. Well, Jesus was being cautious. And I think sometimes that's a message for us too, that we don't jump right in. I know that it's a message for me when I'm tempted, which is quite frequently. Many people in public life, and personal lives find this dilemma every day. There's something in the reading that um, I'm talking about today it, it, in the difference between sheep and lambs. You've got the experienced and the inexperienced. You've got the believer, the new believer, maybe the non-believer. You've got people who are really confident in their faith and people who are not. Now, Jesus actually says that the sheep follow him. That's implying maybe that the lambs don't yet. So there's hope, isn't there, for everyone, for the sheep and the lambs, for the convinced and the unconvinced. And you know what? With this particular tale, Jesus was actually offering security. Because he said, no one's going to snatch anyone away from me. Out of my hand. The relationship with him is secure. Even though we think it isn't even though sometimes we fail to hear his voice, even though sometimes we push him away, but actually that security is there. Even when we suffer, 
be reminded of this, especially if at this time you are going through the winter of your life or some pretty dark times. Now Jesus says in another promise, he says that this relationship is secure and the gift of the sheep to him is the greatest gift he could ever have. And we do know, I'm sure you've heard the story of the lost sheep, that he will go searching for the ones that are missing to the very last one, the 99th of the 100. Of course, there are many more than 99 sheep who are lost. And then Jesus said something else, which was at that time a bit inflammatory because he then spoke of God, God the Father. And this sometimes is a difficult concept to think that Jesus and God are the same. But what he actually said was that we are united. And that was a bit of a red flag to the Pharisees who were about to knock him down about to throw stones and cast aspersions. They didn't understand. They didn't get it. And what's more, they weren't listening because they were out to get Jesus. They had, they didn't think he was who he claimed to be and didn't believe it and were just on a path of destruction. To put to sum that up, I think Jesus was asking they were they were asking Jesus to end the debate about who he was. Um but he wasn't gonna do that. Now there is a sense in which we have to decide where we stand in human terms because often we listen to the voices that distract us often we don't listen to God's voice and there are so many things that clamor for our attention aren't there we have to try so hard sometimes not to be misled at the end of the day Jesus is about reminding us that really it's all about belonging and our status doesn't depend on anything it doesn't depend whether we've had wonderful spiritual experiences it doesn't depend whether we can express ourselves eloquently it doesn't depend on us even always being confident in our faith he's actually saying still again i'm there the voice of jesus should liberate us it shouldn't make us fearful it shouldn't make us feel like we're oppressed and you know what i think those pharisees were feeling those jews they were feeling like that they were feeling a bit oppressed and they certainly weren't free We shouldn't neither be listening to things that evoke demands of us or evoke fear because the voice of the Good Shepherd that we should hear is the one that is a voice of promise, one of encouragement, one that calls us by name for who we are, wherever we are, whatever we've done, whatever we make of our lives whether we're successors in the eyes of society or whether we're failures actually that voice is the one that is calling us through everything it's the voice that calls us by name it's the voice that searches for those who are lost and it's the voice that claims us as god's own that promise that no one and nothing, nothing,
can snatch us out of his hand. So be assured, wherever you are at this moment, wherever you think you're going or not going, remember you are held. I'm going to see if I can find the music to You Are Held. A group called Casting Crowns wrote this song and it's really good and if I don't manage to put it on this video please look it up. Remind yourself you are held. See you next time. Hold it all together, everybody needs you strong But life hits you out of nowhere and barely leaves you holding on And when you're tired of fighting, chained by your control There's freedom in surrender, lay it down and let it go So when you're on your knees and answers seem so far away you're not alone, stop holding on and just be here Your world's not falling apart, it's falling into place I'm on the throne, stop holding on and just be here Just be here Just be are on a storm, you wonder if I love you still But if your eyes are on the cross, you know I always have and I always will And not a tear is wasted, in time you'll understand I'm painting beauty with the ashes, your life is in my hands So when you're on your knees, an answer seems so far away you're not alone, stop holding on and just be here Your world's not falling apart, it's falling into place I'm on the throne, stop holding on and just be here Just be Just be